There's less than a lap to go with the Talladega Super Speedway. On a sunny October afternoon, in a moment of beauty and adrenaline, 28 cars are locked four by four, separated by less than a second. In an ill-fated block, an entire season of effort and championship battle will flip on its head. But more on that right after this. Guys, it's no secret that the ladies love beards, and let's be honest, we all love growing them. Look at that stud right there. But you gotta take care of it too, and luckily, Beard Club is here to help you grow a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. I got the growth kit, and it gives me a multitude of great products to keep my beard healthy. There's sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair, there's a derma roller that helps rejuvenate dormant hair follicles and even supplements for my beard as well. Each morning, I like to spray the growth vitamin spray and take the supplements as just part of my morning routine before I get ready for work. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. So grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash iceberg. That's beardclub.com slash iceberg for 20% off your first order. Now, back to the show. The 2012 season was a big one and also a finite one for NASCAR. Going into the year, we all knew that it'd be the last season with the boxy and unpopular COT car. The next year would bring the redesigned and hopefully better at the time Gen 6 car. But part of that COT era was the two-car tandem at the Super Speedways, a practice where two cars would team up, lock bumpers, and be faster than the rest of a drafting pack. While a novelty that could only be used sparingly at times during races, in 2011, it was mastered to perfection. Every race at Daytona and Talladega saw these for the entirety of their events. While it made for great moments, it spread the field out. Not exactly what NASCAR fans look for at Daytona and Talladega. So, to combat this, NASCAR changed the aero package to keep the cars from locking bumpers. One of these big changes being the front grille opening being reduced so that the cars could overheat quicker and not lock bumpers. Naturally, this is what we see in the fall Talladega race. The pack would run the whole race with seldom tandems. This would prove difficult as the chase for the Sprint Cup was in full swing. Going into Talladega, nine drivers were within a race of the points lead, and realistically, there were four main players still in it. In fourth was a surprise in Clint Boyer. Boyer joined with Michael Walter Bracing in 2012 and had nothing short of a great season. After a forgettable end to his RCR days, he had a consistent one at that. His win at Sonoma being a key sign that he may just be a contender. And so far, he's just holding on to the championship battle. Heading to the green-white checker, he is the leader. Next to him is Matt Kenseth. Kenseth, along with teammate Greg Biffle, was the dominant guy on the day. Kenseth dominated the Super Speedway races as a whole in 2012, and this race was no different in that way. But earlier in the race, it almost wasn't meant to be, as when the Roush teammates were passing Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the lead, the two nearly wrecked. The fact that he's second right now on the front row is a pretty big deal. Back within title contenders, Denny Hamlin entered the race third in points. This is the first time since his 2010 collapse at the end of the year that the driver of the FedEx Toyota is truly a championship contender and in the fight. He called his shot earlier in the chase at New Hampshire with a win, and with it, the year has felt different for Hamlin fans. And after a subpar 2011, the fight means that much more. But if he's going to keep pace, he's going to need a bit of a miracle. Due to being short on fuel and not wanting to run out of fuel in the middle of the pack, he pitted before the final restart, and it's relegated him all the way back to 26th on this said restart. Now, somebody who is a surprise to still even be in the race is Jimmy Johnson, who was currently second in the standings. While Johnson was the best driver in NASCAR at the time, there were two factors that seemed to be working against him. Firstly... He was coming off his worst season ever at the time, finishing sixth in points with only two wins. While that isn't horrible, when you compare it to five straight titles, it's not a good trajectory. But it was only one year. 
The other bad factor is that he hasn't finished a restrictor plate race since 2011. But lucky for him, his teammate and five-time Talladega winner Dale Earnhardt Jr. is right with him to draft. The pair worked well before. Johnson got a narrow victory the year before in the 2011 spring Talladega race. So if the bad trends were to stop, this would have to be where it's at. And then there's the points leader, Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski is bringing the Blue Deuce its best run at a championship since Rusty Wallace had been in it in the 90s. He also is a very special driver for both Dodge and Team Penske. For Dodge, this is their final season in NASCAR, and he's their final bullet in the chamber for a championship. Adding to that pressure is that Team Penske has never won a cup title. But they never won a NASCAR title in general until 2010 when he and the 22 team brought home the then Nationwide Series crown. He's stayed in the thick of the fight so far after winning the chase opener at Chicagoland Speedway in a relatively controversial fashion, blending up in front of Jimmy Johnson. Everything has come together so far this season, but this final restart could ruin everything. His championship lead can literally be seen out of his windshield as he restarts just two rows behind Johnson in the 48. And with this all in mind, let's get to that restart. As they get past the line, everyone's two by two until the 88 and the 48 jump out of line entering turn one and immediately fall back, not having any momentum or help. No help was given either by the fact that Ryan Newman took his number 39 U.S. Army Chevy four wide. Up front, Matt Kenseth's pink Ford Fusion surges ahead of Boyer. Thinking he's clear, though, he brings the 17 car down the track right into the 15, throwing him under the yellow line and then back up into Kevin Harvick, who's running third. Entering and going through three and four, Kenseth is alone, waiting for someone to fly out of the pack and basically challenge him. That someone would be defending Cup Series champion Tony Stewart. At the white, he has the lead. On the backstretch, there was nothing being generated, it seemed, from the pack. Until you looked in the middle lane and saw an unlikely foe appearing. The blue and white 55 car of Michael Waltrip. And then, as they say, a moment in history. is going to get to the finish line first. Is everybody okay? And one of the championship drivers got through. And which ones didn't? All in all, 25 cars are caught up in the giant wreck in some way or another. Matt Kenseth would end up winning the race, and the biggest moment of the wreck overall, though, would come from the great wreck avoidance by Brad Keselowski. Entering the wreck, Keselowski was 20th and falling back in the pack, while Johnson was in that surging middle line. Take a look at Keselowski's perspective through it to see just how lucky and how good he managed to make this. Keselowski went from about 22nd to finishing 7th while Johnson finished 17th and set up possibly a good top 10 run if the pack stays together. It would be a total point swing of around 25 to 30. And while ultimately it wouldn't make a difference as Johnson and his team faltered down the stretch, who knows how different this championship battle could have been in 2012 if these points were basically not given up or added. This wreck also took out Jimmy Johnson's teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who would end up being concussed in the wreck and had to sit out the following two weeks because of it. Little did all of us know that this brain injury would be the beginning of the end for Earnhardt. Overall, it was a huge shift for the 2012 NASCAR season and one of the most memorable moments from the 2010s in the sport. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to you. What are other moments that you think need to have closer looks at them? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And thank you to all my channel members for your continuous support. So until next time, have a good one.